Hi, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your OneNote notebook for the new year using Tiago Forte's Para Framework. This method has completely changed the way I manage my work and personal life. For the past few years, I've been able to keep on top of my priorities and maintain the areas of my life that are most important. So if you're also looking for a way to get organized in the new year and make progress in your work and life, this video is for you. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of what Para is and show you how to set it up in OneNote. So grab your coffee or tea, open up OneNote, and let's get started. Before we dive into setting up your notebook, let me quickly explain the Para framework. Para stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archive. Your notes and information will be organized into one of these four categories. First, we have projects. I like to think of projects as something that has series of activities or tasks with clear deadline and outcome. For example, launching a new e-commerce site, planning a vacation, or completing a certification. Anything with an end goal goes here. The key thing to remember about projects is that they are temporary and time-bound, and that the project will end at some point. Next, we have areas. These represent your ongoing responsibilities or long-term goals that don't necessarily have an end date. Think of things like maintaining your health, your family, and your career. These are the aspects of life you're continuously maintaining and improving. Then there are resources. This is where you store reference materials, ideas, and anything you might need in the future. Maybe it's articles you've saved, excerpts from books, or user manuals. I even save things like AI prompts in here. Be intentional about what you save in this section. Instead of asking if the information is merely interesting or something you might want to revisit someday, consider whether it's truly useful and has clear potential for future use. This mindset helps you avoid cluttering your archive with irrelevant or unnecessary information, keeping it focused and functional. Finally, we have archive. This is where you store anything that's no longer active, but still worth keeping for future reference. Think of it as the home for completed projects, past goals, and outdated resources. But don't view it as a graveyard. The great thing about the Para system is that your ideas and notes can shift between categories depending on what you're working on and what matters most to you at the time. Your archive is like treasure chests of your past experiences, notes, and insights all ready to be reused for future projects. The Para framework is designed to be flexible and dynamic, allowing the information to flow between categories based on its relevance to what you're currently working on. For instance, I'm learning graphic design on Skillshare and have a set goal for myself to complete the classes within 45 days. So this effort would initially sit on their projects since this is a temporary effort with a clear objective. I have my list of lessons or videos I need to watch, and as I watch each video, I take notes on a separate page. If I expand this page, you can see that I have notes nested within below. You can do this by dragging the note pages with your mouse right or left, or using shift all right or shift all left. And I can collapse the page again for a cleaner view. Once I finish the class, aka the project, I can move the entire section to the archive. But let's say I want to keep some of the info for reference for making my YouTube thumbnails. This is perfect to keep in my resources section. So I'll select the pages that I want to move, and you can press shift key and select multiple pages. Drag it over to the YouTube tips section of the resources group and release the mouse. I'll do the same with this page. And it looks like I accidentally dropped it under the color meaning page, which is not a problem since I can just drag it out. Then I'll select all three pages and nest them under the thumbnails to keep them organized. So the notes move around the four main section groups based on their current needs and actionability. This ensures the information stays organized and relevant. By the way, if you're looking to pick up a new skill this year, Skillshare is a great place to start who is a sponsor of this video. Their classes are taught by industry experts and broken into small bite-sized videos, making it easy to fit learning into your busy day. I realize there are plenty of resources like YouTube, 
but finding the right videos can be time consuming. Often, videos aren't part of a structured sequence, so you have to figure out the learning path yourself. With Skillshare, you don't have to worry about that. The content is high quality, logically sequenced, and even includes learning paths that have multiple classes to help you master a specific skill. Whether it's photography, design, video editing, or productivity, Skillshare has something for everyone. If that sounds like what you've been looking for, check out the link in the description below. The first 500 people to use the link will get a free one month trial. It's a great way to explore without any commitment. Thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now let me show you how to set up your notebook step-by-step, -step, starting with creating a new notebook. To start, create a new notebook to set up your para structure. You have two options. Assign one notebook to each para category, like projects, areas, resources, and archive, or use a single notebook with each category as a section group. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the single notebook approach with section groups. For those interested in using multiple notebooks, check out this video in the card above. Here I have a blank OneNote open without any notebooks. To create a new notebook, go to File. It should open up to the new tab, but we'll click on it to make sure. Then I recommend creating the new notebook either on OneDrive or a SharePoint site so that it's saved in the cloud and you can access it from different computers and devices. I'm going to save it in my personal OneDrive. You can name your notebook however you want. I'm going to name it 2025 Para. And I'll add a little house emoji in the front so that I know that this is my personal Para notebook as opposed to my work notebook. We can do this by hitting Windows, semicolon, and searching for home. I'll select this one and close out of this window. Now just hit Create Notebook. It'll take a few seconds for OneNote to get this notebook ready. It asks if I want to share this notebook with other people. For now, I'll say no to this since we can always share it later. Now we have the notebook showing on the left pane with a generic new section one created. We're gonna add four main section groups, one for each para category, projects, areas, resources, and archive. You can add section groups by right-clicking in the notebook's section list and selecting new section group from the context menu. We're gonna do this four times. Now we can go to each one and rename it by either right-clicking and choosing to rename or by hitting F2 and renaming them. I like to put numbers in front of the names since the section groups get automatically sorted alphanumerically. I'll speed through renaming the rest of the section group. Now I'm going to rename this section here as 00inbox. Note that this one is not a section group, it's just a regular section. I'll explain its function in a bit. Within each section group, you can create multiple sections to organize the details. So for example, I'm going to click on the project section group and click to add new section. That creates a section within this section group. We'll name this vacation to Italy. Then we'll add another two sections using the same process. One for my next YouTube video and another for completing a certification on a class. Within each section, we can start to collect contents or write notes. So for example, for vacation to Italy, we might have a page for places to visit, a page for airfares, and a page on different hotels to stay at. Obviously, you'll have these note pages contents filled out, but you get the idea. We'll do the same for the area section group and add sections for home maintenance, health maintenance, and car maintenance. And within the resources section group, I'll add a section for AI prompts and YouTube tips. For the archive section group, this will be empty until we have sections to actually archive. For example, let's say our Italy vacation is now done. We can drag the whole section to the archive. This way, if we decide to visit Italy again in the future, we can drag it back to the project section for reference and update. I want to share a couple of tips about setting up the sections. You might be tempted to create a bunch of sections within each group, thinking that you'll add contents into them soon. But Tiago advises that we only create sections as needed when you have actual contents to put in them. 
It only takes a few seconds to create new sections, so you don't want to create a maze with a bunch of sections that will lead to empty note pages and disappoint you later. In addition to the four section groups, we created a top level section in the notebook called Inbox, prefixed with a double zero. This section serves as a temporary holding space for any notes or content when I can't immediately decide where they fall within the Paris structure. The Inbox offers two key benefits. First, it reduces friction by letting you capture ideas without worrying about categorizing them on the spot, which avoids the risk of placing notes in the wrong section even though it's relatively easy to fix later. And second, it gives you a chance to review your collected notes with fresh perspective. During this review, you might decide some notes don't need to be kept at all, acting as a natural filter before moving them into para categories. This simple addition keeps your system organized while maintaining flexibility. If you want your inbox to be linked to your quick note so that you can capture notes into it easily, here's how you can do that. Go to File, then at the bottom, hit Options. Choose the Save and Backup section and Quick Notes section. Hit Modify. We'll drag this window from the other screen and select the section that we want to link this to, which is our inbox. Hit Select, and you can see the path has changed. Then hit OK. Now for the sake of demonstration, we're starting out in Home Maintenance section, but when you click on Quick Notes, it jumps to the Inbox section. And when we use the keyboard shortcut Windows Alt N, it opens our Quick Notes window. This note, of course, is now being captured right into our Inbox section. And this is super handy when we need to capture a fleeting idea to review and file later. So let's talk about the section layout options. I have all my section groups and sections listed vertically here. But if you'd rather see them horizontally, like a tab on a web browser, you can certainly change it. Just go to View, Tab Layout, and choose Horizontal Tabs. Now you see all the section groups listed horizontally up top. And since the inbox is not part of any section group, it sits outside. I can click on any one of the section groups and it'll show all the sections within. And I can hit back to return to the top menu. And I can do that with the other section groups. And if you want to hide this notebook pane on the left, just unclick the pin. And if you want to bring it back, select the drop down and push the pin again. I personally like the vertical tab layout better, so I'll go back to tab layout from the ribbon and choose vertical tabs. So this was a brief overview of how to set up Para in OneNote. Leave a comment with how you plan to use Para in the new year. If you're interested in learning more about Para, be sure to check out Tiago Forte's book, The Para Method, and his videos on this topic. I'll link everything in the description below. Thanks for watching.